Let's consider this scenario. We have a pulley that's attached to the wall, and it's able to rotate. Here's the ground, and this block is attached by a string that has been wound around the pulley. So when we let the system go, what happens? It accelerates angularly. So watch the block. And we're going to have to find the angular acceleration of this pulley. Let's bring the mass back to the midway point. The pulley is able to rotate, and the hanging block has a mass of 2.5 kilograms. To analyze the scenario, we'll need a couple of other pieces of information. We know the moment of inertia for this pulley. It's actually a sphere, uh, so this is the moment of inertia formula for a sphere. And what else do we know? Well, we know the radius is 48 centimeters. And finally, we are looking for the angular acceleration. To analyze the scenario, we're going to take this system and split it up like that. This pulley accelerates angularly because there is a net torque. Where's the net torque come from? Tension acts at the rope, and it acts at some distance r from the pivot axis. What about the forces over here? Here's the other end of the rope, so tension pulls up on that end of the rope too. And finally, this weight, this block, feels a gravity force. We're going to use big M as the mass of this sphere, or pulley, and little m will be the mass of this hanging block. Let's apply some equations. This system feels a net torque, and that torque is given by the force, which is tension, times the distance from the force to the pivot, which is the radius r, times the sine of the angle, which is 90 because there's 90, de 90 degrees between the radius and the downward tension arrow. So the sine of 90 is equal to 1, so this goes away because we're just multiplying by 1. But the torque is also part of Newton's second law, so we have a second equation with this torque. The torque is equal to the mass which in this case is the rotational mass, or the moment of inertia, times the acceleration, which in this case is the angular acceleration. We've applied Newton's second law, net force is mass times acceleration, to angular motion. Now, I'm going to write this equation again, but in place of I, I'm going to uh, input this equation, 2 thirds mass times radius squared. Recall that big M is the mass of the pulley, or sphere. Let's combine equations. I have one expression for torque here, T, the tension, times R, the radius. But I have a second expression here, which is also equal to that same torque. We can cancel out one of the R's, and we're done with this for now. On the right side, let's analyze the forces. Let's analyze the linear or translational motion. What does Newton's second law say when we're applying it to translational motion? It says net force is mass times the linear acceleration. So let's plug into the equation. What's the net force? Well, if we consider this a positive value, the net force is mg minus tension. This gives us the amount of unbalanced force which does not cancel. And the acceleration we know is equal to the tangential acceleration up here. It's the linear or tangential acceleration. And so this is given by omega times the radius r. Look at this. I don't know what t is, so I have to plug something into this equation. But I can find out what t equals from this equation. So isolate t. We move it to the right by adding, and then we have mg here, and we subtract m alpha r, and now we've isolated t, the tension. That's really useful to us. Look back over here. We can now substitute in for tension using this expression. Look at this. We can solve this equation. The only unknown is alpha, the angular acceleration. We know little m is 2.5. We know g is 9.81. r we have, that's 0.48 meters. And big M we also know, 12 kilograms. But how do we solve this equation? Alpha is the unknown, so you have to group all of the alpha terms on the same side. Okay then, I'm just going to add m alpha r to both sides, and now I have this, 
plus what I've added, the MR alpha. I have an alpha in both of those terms, so let's factor that out. And this is what we get. Now what I can do is I can take this expression and move it to the other side so that I've isolated alpha. I'll have to divide, and what I get is this. Getting to this expression seems pretty complicated, but let's condense it down to just a few steps. We started by looking at the torque acting on the pulley. We said torque is given by force times distance, and then we also applied Newton's second law for rotation. We set those expressions equal, and we were done now with this part of the motion. Next, we turned our attention to the block, and we analyzed it separately. We applied Newton's second law again for linear motion, and we isolated the tension. Why did we isolate tension? So that we could plug it in for this tension here. When we combine these three equations, and remember the only tricks are to use the I formula and to use the tangential acceleration formula, after combining those, you can get to this result simply through algebraic manipulation.